Hey guys, Buffing Game Bad today, bringing out a video, and today we're finally having a video here that I've been planning for a few weeks now, and I was waiting for the right time to release it, and yesterday we had some big news dropped regarding the future of Call of Duty, as well as Warzone. The next generation of Warzone, Warzone 2, has kind of been officially announced. We have an article here over at Bloomberg.com, I'll release that down below. And what this article does is it's go ahead and talking about the next three planned Call of Duty titles in the future, which are going to be part of the are on the Sony console. In the future, we have this year's, later this year, Modern Warfare 2 is suspected for 2022, which is stated here at the Bloomberg article. And then in 2023, we have a Treyarch title, which is unknown at this particular point in time. The article also goes in uh, to mention here that the deal also includes, now this is or regarding the planned acquisition, that before the acquisition where Microsoft bought Activision, there was already uh, a deal for to make sure that the next three Call of Duty titles are released on Sony uh, platforms, that being PlayStation. So, seeing that that is the case, there's also a deal, or in part of this deal, includes a planned new iteration of Call of Duty's Warzone, which is the lucrative free-to-play game from 2020. And that's going to be planned for 2023 as well. So, what does this mean for Warzone is honestly very good news here. So, if we go ahead and look at Warzone itself, this was released in March of 2020. So I think what we can expect here is that Modern Warfare 2 will be coming out here in October or November of 2022. And then similar to what we saw with the first iteration of Warzone is going to be that Warzone 2 will come out here in March of 2023. Now, if we go back and learn or I guess rediscover everything we know about the Modern Warfare 2 game and what's going on, we have the single player, the multiplayer as well as the third mode which is going to be dmz so i have it word that i've been talking to some insiders here and what they're saying is that dmz is the focus right now for infinity ward and also that infinity ward has made huge graphical and technical leaps with the in-house engine due to the infinity ward team in poland so there's a lot of information here that indicates that dmz is going to be the main focus at launch and then we'll probably see that exact same map for DMZ, which is going to be an amalgamation of the original Modern Warfare 2 POIs, as well as whatever else is going to be included in this map. And that's going to be reused for the Warzone map. So the DMZ map, which we should be able to get our hands on when Modern Warfare 2 releases, will be similar to, if not the exact same map used for Warzone 2. Now, what information do we know about Warzone 2 so far? These are all kind of, these are not official information, but it is said that Warzone 2 is going to be exactly that, the second iteration of Warzone, and it will only be on current gen of consoles, meaning the PS5 and the new Xboxes, as well as PC only. So no past weapon integrations, a completely new game for the better hardware. So what this means is that the original Modern Warfare, Cold War, and Vanguard weapons will not carry over. And what we'll do is start fresh with Modern Warfare 2 only weapons in Warzone 2. So this is really good news. And hopefully, I think what we can expect here, there's one of two things that will happen. Is that Warzone 2 will come out probably in March of 2023. Same that we saw with the original Warzone. And then we could see with Treyarch's game later that year, could see a, another round of Warzone integrations. But I think the smart thing to do here, the smart play is if Warzone 2 comes out in 2023... You have all the Modern Warfare 2 content, and then what they can do, and I've heard this, is that they're planning to bring over a lot of the operators and skins and things like that, so they may, in fact, also bring over a lot of the weapons as well. So we could have Warzone 2 being a combination of Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 content weapons all in one, serving that Warzone 2 would be a Modern Warfare-only battle royale for the future and then when Treyarch's game comes out in 20 later that year 2023 they could include the Treyarch integration or I think the better thing to do here would almost be a blackout 2 and have that as well as a free to play have it as an addition onto the Warzone client or something like that where you can link to both that way you can choose from Modern, Modern Warfare Warzone 2 or Blackout 2 and play one or the other, have different feature playlists, things like that. That way you're not throwing all of these different game titles, weapons into one game like they did with the original Warzone. So if we look at Warzone here, I think it kind of started to go downhill when the Cold War integration started. Uh, and then obviously Vanguard seems to be just very, very lackluster. The map is very, very lackluster. I think this game thrived 
with only Modern Warfare content. And if Modern Warfare had additional user support, I think Warzone would still be an amazing game if it stuck to potentially a new map down the road that was Modern Warfare centric or focused, as well as additional Modern Warfare weapons coming out every few months, new operators coming out every few months. There were a lot of unused assets for Modern Warfare that we didn't get. They also talked about using the Modern Warfare 2 remastered assets, such as weapons for blueprints, things like that which never ended up happening. So I suspect that we'll end up seeing a lot of this in Modern Warfare 2 here in 2022. And a lot of that will be integrated into Warzone. Now, let's talk about Warzone 2 itself. What's going to be different this time around versus the first Warzone? That's a big question here that we need to kind of focus on because one of the problems I think with Warzone is you have these quote unquote meta weapons that there's no risk or reward or there's no checks and balance system, I should say, in order to check these weapons. So if you look online, um, everyone makes the best meta builds, things like that. I do my own kind of more unique, realistic builds here. But if you look at the best meta builds, they're all largely focused on the same exact attachments for every single gun. And there's no checks and balances to restrict you from using the best weapon with the best attachments. So I think what we're going to see here, and again, this is something I have from Rouse Valve, and we've heard Tom Henderson talk about this as well, is that if this is going to be a, off the Modern Warfare 2 client, Modern Warfare 2 is kind of planning something a little bit different here with the DMZ zone, or DMZ, where the weapons uh, will actually cost something like points. So what I'm assuming here, I think the most logical way to solve this meta weapon problem and the balancing problem is to have you kit your loadout with an allowed amount of points. So if we look at a game like Insurgency Sandstorm, which at least on PC in 2018 and here on consoles in 2021, this game does a very good job of balancing as far as weapon meta type weapons, I guess we could say, as well as kitting out your player. So what Insurgency Sandstorm does is you have low tier weapons all the way up to high tier weapons. And the high tier weapons cost more points. Everything in your kit costs points. So I think, let's just say you start with 12 points. You have weapons ranging from anywhere from one point all the way up to six points. And then you have attachments ranging anywhere from one point all the way up to four points. So different optics will cost anywhere from one to four points. You'll also have different barrel attachments going from one to three points different grips on your weapon, again, going from, I believe, one or two all the way up to four points, magazine attachments, side rail attachments, buttstock attachments, all these cost points. So you can either throw all your points into your weapon, or you also need to leave some points left over for things like armor. You can either have light armor for one point, heavy armor for three points, gas mask, or night vision goggles, which would be needed anywhere from one to four points. And then grenades and tactical grenades anywhere from one to two or three points. So in order to have your complete loadout, you need to utilize your allowed amount of points correctly. So you can either, like I said, you can choose to be lightly armored and have no grenades and things like that and put all your points into your weapon. Or you can put a few points into your weapon and make sure you have the gear and the armor that you need. That seems to be what I think they'll do here. So that way we don't have this meta weapon problem where everybody can use the uh, the, the next best weapon. If we look at like the Kilo meta, the Growl meta, the Bruin meta that we had in the original Warzone when it was only Modern Warfare weapons, everyone could use that as soon as someone discovered the build. And there was no checks and balances. There was no downside to using these weapons and it required a huge balance overhaul in order to correct this. But the downside here would be you're throwing all your points into a weapon and now you have some negatives with that. Yes, you have a very good weapon, but maybe you don't have tactical devices. Maybe the points would be also utilized for your perks, like we saw the point system in some of the Black Ops games. So if you're not going in with, with all your perks with your loadout because you're not allocating your points there, maybe the points are going for armor. Maybe the points are going for something else. I would assume it's going to be weapons, perks, and grenades, tactical devices, things like that. And so if you're not allocating your points for the perks and you're throwing everything into a weapon, um, as well as you're not allocating it for like stun grenades, things like that, which would cost more points given the impact they have on gameplay, then yes, you have a very good weapon, but you're also going to have a lot of cons associated with that loadout that you've picked. So there's going to have to be, again, a good system of checks and balances. This seems to be the best way to do it. Um, and certainly Sandstorm, I think, does it perfectly. And I think that should translate over perfectly to Warzone. Again, that's what I'm hearing. That could all change. 
but that makes the most sense. That would allow them to add more weapons in the future, allow them to be different point systems. If we looked at weapons uh, for modern warfare in general, we could say like something something that's a low tier type weapon. Maybe the FAL would be maybe one or two points. And then if we looked at something like the Grau, that would be five or six points. And if you have, let's say, 12 to 12 to 14 total points to use on your weapons, attachments, perks, and tactical devices, then you need to pick and choose what you're doing with the, all those points wisely. So that's the way I suspect this will end up going. And I think that's the best way to get around this. That way, when they add new weapons, they don't need to constantly do a lot of these patches for weapon balance. Obviously, there's going to be some of that needed. However, you can just switch up the points needed for different attachments uh, based on how things are going. So, uh, you know, the monolithic suppressor, the angled foregrip, those are like the best attachments to feel. If we look at a, a standard meta modern warfare loadout, mono suppressor, longest barrel, angled foregrip, VLK, heaviest mag, right? Largest magazine. All those should be, if we, that meta was identified, it could be thrown up to larger amounts of points. That way you would need to really you could do that, but then you would also go in with probably no perks or one perk and no grenades or anything like that. And there's their con right there is that, yeah, you have a great weapon, but you're more easily to be killed. You don't have all the advantages that you have with something like like a ghost and overkill, all of that stuff. So that's the best way I, I see this happening for Modern Warfare 2. And again, just keeping it for only Modern Warfare, they could throw in all the original Modern Warfare weapons from 2019. All the operators combine that with Modern Warfare 2 content. Then you have this kind of almost like a let's kind of almost like a Call of Duty mobile type modern warfare battle royale going forward, especially if Activision is well, Microsoft at this point will be getting away from the yearly release cycle and Modern Warfare 2, let's say, is supported for another year or two after this with Warzone and Modern Warfare type content. We could see this game going on well into probably like 2025, 2026 with modern warfare content. Imagine if we had a few new weapons every six months after the one-year support ended. Uh, something like that. New attachments coming in, customized operators. Being able to do things like that I think would be great. So let me know what you guys think down below for Warzone 2. Again, this is what we know so far. Really exciting news. And this is the, the, the next logical step for Warzone. The second iteration, Warzone 2, as, it's, as we're going to be calling it now. Most likely releasing in March of 2023. Seems like Infinity will be will be focusing on multiplayer, single player, and the DMZ mode, which is going to be that that I use this term loosely, the Tarkov esque type mode. Um, but I have many videos on all this information. I'll link that down below for the Modern Warfare Two playlist coming up here. You guys can catch up on all that. Let me know what you think down below of Warzone Two. What do you think they should do with it? We'll go over weapon wish lists, things like that for Modern Warfare Two here in the future. Let me know what you guys think down below. Are you excited for Warzone 2, if it's, especially if it's only Modern Warfare content going forward? Till next time, this is Buckner Gaming, out.